I have very dramatic news. I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe might be broken, but I have a way to fix it. In 2011, a software engineer named Rod Hilton published a post on his blog, NoMacheteJuggling.com. In the post, Rod detailed what he believed to be a big problem with Star Wars, the original and prequel trilogy, that there was no good order in which to watch the six original movies. The two common orders in which people watched the, at the time, six existing live-action Star Wars movies ruin the experience of the story. In-universe chronological order spoils the Episode 5 Vader reveal, and release order features a terrible cameo from Hayden Christensen that makes no sense if you haven't seen the prequels. So, Hilton created something that he named the Machete Order, an alternative order with which Hilton believed one could watch the original and prequel trilogies and be told the most satisfying story. You start with episodes 4 and 5, but after 5, instead of moving to 6, you step back to episodes 2 and 3, learning Anakin's story and how he falls to the dark side. Then you watch 6 to learn whether Luke will make the same mistakes as his father, and you completely skip episode 1 because it is both not very good and also wholly unnecessary when considering Luke's story. It is a brilliant way to look at how to watch a series of movies. And I've been working on a few MCU videos recently that got me thinking about the phases, groupings of movies within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Phase 1 is Iron Man Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, The Hammering, Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, and The Avengers. Phase 2 is Iron Man 3, Thor the Dark World, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, and Ant-Man. And then Phase 3 is Civil War, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Avengers Endgame, and Spider-Man Far From Home. And when I'm talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe here, I'm not talking about the television shows or any other supplementary material. I am only talking about the movies. And one of the things that I have been perplexed with specifically is Age of Ultron and how much it just does not fit into the overarching narrative. Character development is dropped for the sake of making an Avengers movie. But then I realized this wasn't as much a problem with Age of Ultron as it was a problem with its place in Phase 2. For many reasons, Avengers Age of Ultron does not work as the climax of Phase 2 in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As a movie, it's okay, but it does not fit well into the overarching narrative. So I looked at Age of Ultron, see if I could make any changes to how the movie builds on Winter Soldier, leads into Civil War, but then I got an idea. One inspired by the Machete Order. What if instead of changing the movies to fit the phase, what if you changed the phase to fit the movies? Could you reorder Phase 2 to tell a more successful overall story without ruining any of the individual movies? I think you can. Now, I'll talk you through this. Explain what I think the best order to watch these movies in, go over why I think this order works so well, and talk about some of the small changes you would need to make so that it all makes sense. But note that this is in the same vein as the Machete Order, but not nearly as cohesive. It's also a thing you could actually watch in more of a thought experiment. But with a little bit of imagination, I think you could get away with both. So I will present you with what I guess you can call the Nando Order. So here's my big issue with Phase 2 that this order will address. Phase 2 ends with an Avengers movie that undoes almost everything fun about what came before it in Phase 2. Age of Ultron makes two decisions that I really do not agree with. The first is this moment at the end of the movie. I hate that even though one movie ago, Steve, Nat, Sam, Maria, and Fury all took down S.H.I.E.L.D., Age of Ultron ends with S.H.I.E.L.D. saving the day in a helicarrier that we did not know existed, and then it just, I guess, evaporates into thin air, because we never see it again. And I know some people will say, like, argue that maybe this is all part of the Grand Sword master plan that was teased in the end of Spider-Man Far From Home, but A, it wasn't, and B, that doesn't take away from the fact that this moment really softens the punch from the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. at Winter Soldier. Wow, S.H.I.E.L.D. is dead, no more S.H.I.E.L.D.? 
Uh, yeah, they're all gone. You're on your own, winks under eye patch. And in the same vein, I find it preposterous that Iron Man 3 ends with Tony symbolically destroying the suits and getting rid of the arc reactor, yet Age of Ultron opens with Tony just in the armor again, because, you know, it's Avengers, so Tony needed the suit. So, Age of Ultron undercuts the big moments from the movies that came before it. It almost feels like all of these movies were written separately. Like, Joss didn't know how Iron Man 3 and Winter Soldier would end, so he just wrote what was kind of a generic Avengers movie and added a line or two to make Ultron fit into the canon. But a movie that would make sense whether S.H.I.E.L.D. existed at the end of Winter Soldier or not, and whether Tony still wore Iron Man suits or he didn't. But this really muddles Phase 2. Which, if it had one problem as a phase, would be Phase 2's obsession with maintaining the status quo. All of the consequences of Thor 2, Iron Man 3, and Winter Soldier are nearly erased for Age of Ultron, and then just brought back again afterwards. It's a very strange choice. So here is my proposed new version. Stay with me on this. You start with Thor 2, immediately following Avengers 1. Next up, Guardians 1. Although, Guardians 1 can kind of go anywhere, but I do think it makes sense second because, and this is where things get really weird, next we do Age of Ultron. Avengers Age of Ultron follows Guardians 1. And I'm sure you think this sounds crazy, but I'll explain. Then you hit Winter Soldier, followed by Ant-Man, and you end Phase 2 with Iron Man 3. Here are some of the benefits. First, get Thor 2 out of the way. Instead of being part of Phase 2, it almost feels like a palate cleanser after Avengers at the end of Phase 1, the same way that Ant-Man or Spider-Man Far From Home work. But then the bigger issues it solves. If Avengers Age of Ultron happens before Captain America the Winter Soldier, the S.H.I.E.L.D. story feels complete. We as an audience get time to appreciate S.H.I.E.L.D. We have an entire Phase 1 of movies where characters are interacting with S.H.I.E.L.D. And then at the end of Phase 1, it's the Avengers and the Helicarrier and everything we've come to expect from S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. is still going. So, when Avengers Age of Ultron starts, there is still a S.H.I.E.L.D. It is a function of the universe at this point. So, when they show up to save the day, it is a cool, triumphant moment, but it doesn't undercut something that happened earlier in The Winter Soldier. And then, now that we as an audience have gotten very comfortable with S.H.I.E.L.D., when S.H.I.E.L.D. is forced to be destroyed in The Winter Soldier, it feels like more of a loss, because like in Avengers 1 and Avengers 2 now, S.H.I.E.L.D. is the cavalry, like Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings. Things are never completely lost as long as S.H.I.E.L.D. might be around to save everybody, and now our characters have to deal with the fact that there is no S.H.I.E.L.D. Another benefit of moving Age of Ultron is I think it helps to justify Tony's obsession that is brought to a head in Iron Man 3. The arc goes, Iron Man 1, Tony builds the Iron Man suit, Iron Man 2, Tony Stark is Iron Man publicly, Avengers, Tony saves the world as Iron Man, but has a traumatic experience in space that will shape how he thinks about protecting the Earth in the future, and his immediate reaction to that in Avengers Age of Ultron, would be Tony building Ultron, trying to create a suit of armor around the world. That is his first step. But then, when the Ultron project is a disaster, Tony becomes a little more isolated, and that leads into Iron Man 3. Instead of building drones, he's building more suits. And he's not coming out of his office, and he's not spending time with other people because he feels so responsible for what happened but Tony still believes that everything he's done up until this point has not been enough. And this theme of isolation is something that would play into both Tony and Cap's story. After his failure in Avengers Age of Ultron, Tony takes a step out of the public eye, and then at the same time, Tony and Steve go their separate ways, which leaves Steve at S.H.I.E.L.D., which, when S.H.I.E.L.D. falls at the end of The Winter Soldier, will leave Steve extremely isolated. He's just got this core small group of Avengers, so when he and Tony meet in the beginning of Civil War, they will both be at their most extreme, specifically because they've been spending so much time apart from one another. Also, this is a small thing, but I think in this order, War Machine would make more sense. Iron Man 1, no War Machine. Iron Man 2, Rhodey gets a suit, which is called the War Machine. 
He does not show up in Avengers. The next time we see him is in Iron Man 3, and now he's gone to the Iron Patriot suit. I feel like we didn't get very much time at all with War Machine, War Machine. So this change over to Iron Patriot didn't feel like anything that really mattered. But if we get War Machine in Avengers Age of Ultron before Iron Patriot, we get a movie where Rhodey is just War Machine. So then when he turns into Iron Patriot, it feels like a little bit more of a betrayal to Tony and their history together. Also, if Iron Man 3 happens after Avengers Age of Ultron, Tony's suit destruction starts to feel very important. Like I said already, in the original version of Phase 2, Tony goes through an entire movie that ends with him giving up all of his suits and the idea of being Iron Man by creating more robots and more drones. They are all destroyed. And then Avengers Age of Ultron starts and, uh, for no reason, really. Not only is Tony still flying around as Iron Man, but he also has a fleet of drones. So it kind of is the suits that make him who he is to some extent. I think it would make a lot more sense if immediately following Avengers 1, Tony's next move after the Battle of New York is to create an army of drones. And that's where Ultron comes in. Then that fails. And now in Iron Man 3, Tony is just forced to create a bunch of different suits for himself because he thinks only he can solve this problem. He can't trust anyone else. He is getting more isolated. And his suit destruction at the end of Iron Man 3 feels very powerful. And then when he is forced to pick up the suit again halfway through Civil War to fight Captain America, that is a huge moment. Because even though Tony has found some peace, something that really feels like it might stick, he is coming back into the game specifically to stop Steve. But you may be saying, hey, this is a great idea. Just like all of your ideas, Justin Hammer is cool. But you can't just switch these movies around. There's too many details within the movie that wouldn't make any sense. To which I will reply, you're correct about Justin Hammer. And also, yeah, you have to make a couple of changes. Nothing too important, honestly. I went through the movies and I think I more or less have it. Here's what you need to do. Thor 2 can stay roughly the same. Age of Ultron's where most of the big changes have to come in. So just like imagine these in your head when you see the movie. First of all, when Captain America and Baron Strucker meet in Sokovia, Strucker mentions that he is Hydra, which means he's also S.H.I.E.L.D., a reference to the events of Winter Soldier. Just ignore that line. Pretend he stole the scepter from S.H.I.E.L.D. or something, and that's how he got it. Also, at the party, ignore the Falcon cameo. Let's just imagine that's somebody else he's hanging out with. In the original version of Age of Ultron, Maria Hill seems to work for Tony Stark. Let's say in this movie she acts as more of a liaison between the Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. Most of the middle of the movie can be roughly the same. I definitely want to get rid of the end of the movie where the Avengers all assemble. Because for the next movie to make sense, I think it's helpful if we don't really know what Vision has been up to. But we assume maybe he's on the run or traveling through the galaxy or something like that. And he'll be back for Civil War. And we can do something similar with Wanda. And the Thanos post credit scene is fine, but it doesn't really matter. And if you're asking... Hey, well, if Avengers Age of Ultron comes before Winter Soldier, where has S.H.I.E.L.D. been this whole time? Just say that Ultron shut him down or something until the very end where they're able to get control back. Besides that, though, Age of Ultron more or less works. Next, you go to Winter Soldier. The only really big change you need here, no Baron Strucker uh, post credit scene. Ant-Man, the same. Iron Man 3, we can't have Jarvis since Jarvis is the Vision now. Just imagine it's Friday instead of Jarvis. Also, you gotta get rid of the Bruce Banner post credit scene since in this universe, Bruce Banner is currently in space. But like, what's the point of a phase? Like, why are we bothering to organize these movies into what really seem to be arbitrary groupings? I imagine there are three reasons. First is probably purely for organizing these movies from a production standpoint. There also might be a second, like phases helping general audiences to keep track of the franchise, especially when you're trying to sell a box set. But then third, you hope that these phases tell a story. Some sort of narrative that overarches the movies comprising the phase. Phase one is assembling the Avengers for the first time. Phase three is the rise and fall of Thanos. But then what is phase two? It's just kind of phase one again reassembling the Avengers to do another Avengers. So if that's the case, I would also like to change the composition of phase two. 
And since phase one was six films, phase two was six films, and phase three was 11, I think phase three can afford to lose a film and give it to phase two so that two can tell some sort of complete story. And then that's my last change. Phase two should end with Civil War. Then phase two will tell the story of how the Avengers disassembled and Earth's mightiest heroes gave Thanos an opportunity to wipe out half of all life in the universe in phase three. They start off as a team and everything's going well, but Tony makes a big mistake with Ultron. That creates some divisions within the team. Everybody goes to their separate corners, has their own crisis that isolates them further from the group. And then when a character from the past shows up, it causes a new conflict, a very personal conflict. Our protagonist and antagonist, Steve and Tony, are both at their worst state to deal with this. Instead of coming off of a relatively successful Avengers mission where both characters shake hands and drive into the sunset, these guys are both coming off of huge personal losses, losing the thing that defined them most in Phase 1, Tony losing his suits and Steve losing his connection to the military. In Act 2 of a story, you want your characters to end in a really bad spot. And Age of Ultron just is not that. Neither is Ant-Man. Civil War is where Phase 2 should have ended. I'm not saying that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is bad or anything like that, or that Phase 2 is a problem because it has some of my favorite movies in the MCU. All I'm saying is, I believe if you put these movies in a slightly different order, Phase 2 would tell a way more interesting story. Oh, and one more thing. You may have noticed about halfway through this video as I was explaining the Nando order, I brought up the Phase 2 posters and rearranged them. And even though all of my editing is done in Adobe Premiere, that bit was actually done in Adobe After Effects. It is not anything difficult or special or anything like that, but it does happen to be the first bit of After Effects work I've ever done in a video. And I learned the basics of After Effects from Jordy Vanderput's class, Learn Adobe After Effects for Beginners, on this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. There are classes in productivity, design, writing, photography, and so much more. I always recommend fellow YouTuber Thomas Frank's class called Productivity Masterclass. How to build habits that last if you want to become more organized and productive and if you want to learn premiere and after effects editing like if you wanted to actually make the nando order of phase two by reordering the movies i would highly recommend jordy's classes skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold you can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And if you would like to join the millions of people already learning on Skillshare today, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in this description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity, explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. What you find might just surprise and inspire you. As always, I have to be a humongous thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are the best. If you want to see your name up here, get access to videos early, other cool stuff, throw in literally any amount of money at patreon.com slash nandovmovies. We do videos uh, where, where I'm on that whiteboard over there. We do a book club that we're going to do every month from now on. That's something that I have to set up a new Patreon tier for. It's a lot of fun. I really appreciate everybody who supports the channel. You have no idea how awesome it is. Also, make sure to listen to the podcast, Mostly Nitpicking, where every week me and my friends DJ and Diggins pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. In the past, we've done plenty of episodes on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Me and DJ, even before Infinity War came out, did an episode where we nitpicked the MCU. Like, we found specific little weird things, like how strange the government in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, or how weird it is that they have so many different one-and-done technologies that could solve every problem. 
problem. And this isn't like cinema sins or anything. We're not trying to ruin the movie or say it's bad. It's just more of like a, hey, isn't it interesting that in Iron Man 3, Tony pretty much perfected a cure for death and no one's used it since. Last thing, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I am Nando V Movies on all of those platforms. It's where I post updates about videos, podcasts, pictures of my cat, pictures of me in these new glasses, which I, I really love. They're not real, like they, they filter out blue light. And it's where I put videos about Artemis Fowl, which is something I am still obsessed with to this day. Last thing, the tease for a future video. X-Men, God Loves Man Kills, my favorite X-Men story, which is the one that X2 is more or less based on. Um, I'm making a video that will heavily feature this book. It should be out very soon. I'm really excited about it. That is all I've got. I'll see you next time.